Have you ever failed to truly understand the gravity of a situation until you finally get it well past the point that you should have? That's how my conversion to Christ was. And perhaps a good analogy from my own life experiences is that of fatherhood. You see, I knew my wife was pregnant. I even knew from the sonograms that I should be expecting twins. I did all the necessary things to prepare. I took on a second job to help brace for the financial burden. I helped to gather and purchase cribs, bottles, diapers, rattles, monitors, onesies, more diapers, brushes, washcloths, bumps, bumpers, wall hangings, lamps, still more diapers, ointment, car seats, baby monitors, did I already say that? Changing table. You see, I understood the concept. I'd seen my own father take on this role with me and my brother. But every single father out there can tell you that you really don't get it until that doctor hands over that little bundle of joy and you finally realize once and for all that you really are this child's source of security, love, protection, guidance, shelter, clothing, nourishment, and so much more. Like I said, that's how it was for me when I came to Christ. In following my previously set routine, I was reading any and all books that would even possibly hint at answering my big questions. Who am I? What am I worth? Why am I here? Where am I going when I die? Finally, I held in my hand a couple of books that actually laid out the salvation message. And perhaps most importantly, one of these books laid out the need for a Savior and how I had fallen short. You see, I had bought into a lie that somehow just being a good person was somehow tied into a person's salvation and eternal destination. Well, that sounds all nice and great, but what is a good person? Compared to who? Hitler? Something tells me we'd all pass the test if he was the measure or the standard that God used. The reason this concept hit me so hard is because it was the very thing I had to continually deny in order to truly miss the need for a Savior all those years. After all, the only person that needs saving is the one that's in trouble, right? So if you fail to see that you're in trouble, you'll also fail to see the need to be rescued. The next book I picked up just drove home what the first one started, and it was called The Case for Christ by author Lee Strobel. In effort to save time here, please see the sidebar for a link that tells more about the book and the author, as he was a devout atheist and very convincing with his arguments. After all, it was his goal to disprove Christianity altogether. And since atheists always screamed for this evidence, and this book was written by an atheist that screamed for the same evidence, it might actually be a book worth you checking out. By the time I, I put this book down, I felt my need for any actual faith dwindle smaller and smaller to be minimal at best. But how does one articulate the single greatest day or moment in their life? It seems with even several thousand words to choose from in the English language that they all fail me in some way as I try to adequately communicate to you who Christ is for me now, his meaning in my life, his importance to me, my immediate and overwhelming love and commitment to him, combined with an overwhelming and amazing desire to repent and beg him to forgive me. Not just for the little white lie here and there, not for engaging in random drunkenness, or even premarital sex, but for denying him all these years. For making him a PC good guy worthy of learning from, all the while promoting that every religious choice has its merits. As if Christ died sacrificially because there were several options? What used to make sense to me was now absurd. What I used to see as an elitist and exclusive faith was now one of love one that was so desperately trying to get this message out. After all, Christ died for everyone, not just Joe Christian. 
How is that exclusive again? How had I not seen all of this before? You know, many view salvation as the finish line, the end goal. And in the search for truth, finally finding this kind of gem would make a conclusion of that sort understandable to say the least. Yet the truth is, salvation is just the starting line. Before that, I was just lost. Remember? Now I'm fully engaged and living my life for him. Each new day is a new journey in the plans that he has for me. And I would never, ever go back. This is The Edge, signing off for now.